Welcome back. It's now time for The Breakfast on Pulse TV Africa. To make sense of the papers today, we're joined by Adimola Akimola, the publisher of the Podium Media. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's my pleasure once again. All right. Thank you. So we'll be uh, taking a look at uh, the top stories here and then, uh, yes, we'll delve right in. The Punch newspaper, Autumn visits Buhari. Governors say 2023 polls under threat. Bainway governor advises Nigerians to stop inflammatory comments. Akira Delu says, with full-scale banditry, nobody will think of 2023 elections. And Ondo State governor says Buhari's second term is the best time for restructuring. MFLA CBN governor says, we disburse $80 million weekly for school fees and BTAs. Oshimbajo here is saying we're expecting 84 million AstraZeneca vaccine doses this year. Nigeria vaccinates 215,277 Ghana, uh, 277,000 people. Ghana vaccinates 420,000 and seven states shun vaccination exercise. AFG begins process for concession of 12 highways. Also on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning, we see a picture here of people holding placards. And the Punch uh, captions this, protesting parliamentary workers demand autonomy for state assemblies. We're working to rule Nigeria for at least 32 years. That's a statement from the ruling, ruling All Progressives Congress. Again, Amoteku seizes 100 cows over illegal grazing in Ondo State. Controversy surrounds Apprentice's death in custody over businessman's missing 14 million naira goods. NBA protests as magistrate court orders lawyer handcuffed, jails counsel for contempt. Reps grill amnesty boss over 21 audit inquiries, audit queries. And lastly, NDLEA seizes UK, Australia bound cocaine, heroin in courier firms. Those are the stories on the Punch newspaper this morning. All right, uh, and now on the Nation newspapers, uh, it says there, I think that's from me, Malab Buni, it says, uh, APC will rule Nigeria for 32 years, Buni boasts. Uh, party inaugurates panel. Also, autonomy, uh, workers shot houses of assembly. MPC okays more CBN spending to boost economy. And um, still on the Punch, Amotekun seizes um, 300 cows in Ondo State. Telcos reject NIBSS request for SIM swap list. And um, the big one there, ex-military chief says troops lack proper arms to fight. Soldiers battling Boko Haram in Hilux vans with outdated guns. We can also find on the nation this morning, uh, Lagos Ogumbauchi, top vaccination chart. And uh, shot Ekiti a police woman dies. That's a really sad story. Otto meets Buhari over attack by herders. That's uh, one of the last ones. I think it's the last one we're going to be taking from the nation newspapers this morning. Okay. The Daily Independence reads, Nigeria sitting on a keg of gunpowder. Autumn tells Buhari, says there won't be 2023 elections if insecurity persists. Still the story about parliamentary workers halting <coughs> legislative businesses nationwide. Amo Senate sits. Supreme Court halts trial after APC accused justices of colluding with APC. Bajabi Amila overrides deputy, accepts petition from diaspora thieves. Zenith Bank retains positions as, position as Nigeria's best bank. Kogi government here is explaining why they are yet to receive COVID-19 vaccines. CBN keeps rates amid rising inflation. PDP tackles APC over boast to stay beyond 32 years in power or in office. United Capital shareholders to receive 4.2 billion Naira dividend. Those are the top stories on the Daily Independent. And uh, lastly, just before we bring in uh, Demola Kingbola this morning, let's go to the Nigerian Tribune. Um, we can see here, secessionist frustrated. Nigeria must restructure, says Fire Me. Akiri Dulu spoke for himself, Akintoye led group says. And also, Bajabi Amila accepts Thieves' petitions, uh, petition rather, rejected by Deputy Speaker. Godwin MFLA is in the news. It says, with $36.2 billion foreign reserves, no need to panic over dollars. 
Appeal court appointment, I was quoted out of context, says the NBA president. And the big one there says, how Nigeria lost $5.7 billion to shoddy concessions and PPP projects. Uh, that's, uh, that's from the reps. Uh, records are $90.5 million lost yearly from uh, Lagos Airport's BOT. Autumn saying insecurity may, insecurity, I beg your pardon, may scuttle 2023 uh, poll. That's from uh, Governor Tom. And we also can find there, Obaseke uh, demolishes ex-deputy governor's two others' uh, houses in Benin. And uh, we're just going to squeeze one more. Boko Haram fighting with arm, arms and ammunition seized from Nigerian troops. All right. Um, Debola Akinwala, well, uh, let's uh, bring you in here. Um, get your thoughts in on some of those big ones. Right. There's a lot of major stories. Okay. Uh, Mr. Akinwala, yeah. This story, we've seen it on several uh, newspapers this morning. It's about the All Progressives Congress, you know, explaining their plans to stay in power for another 32 years. This is a statement from Mai Malabuni. He's the chairman of the uh, National Caretaker Committee of the APC. And he's saying that the APC needs about eight more terms to improve the lives of Nigerians. What's your reaction to that? <clears throat> That's a very reckless statement to make at this time um, in the history of Nigeria. Um, the decision as to who rules between APC and PDP is entirely in the hands of the electorate. It's not for him to say. Um, it typically shows the mentality of the average Nigerian politician. Um, we've been there for six years. This is where we are. You tell us you need 32 years more. You might as well ask for forever. So person like think that's an irresponsible statement coming from someone like Puni. And also you tie that to the statement by Autumn um, that if insecurity continues, then the election in Tuesday will be under threat. It shows the way politicians think. Everything is about elections. We're talking about the lives of people who don't even know what will happen tomorrow, don't know whether some people will leave to see next month. He's talking about 2020 elections which means everything to the average politician is about winning elections. They, 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 they narrowly define every problem as a problem of election. So uh, I think the statement by Puni and the one by Autumn, they are self-serving, they are irresponsible, and, and, and they are ill-advised coming at this time. Okay, a lot of people have been killed in this country. Autumn will not be the first person to be attacked. And yes, of course, we sympathize with him we, 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 we identify with him at this period, but that is not enough excuse for you to go ahead and make reckless statements that, that have nothing to do, that does not even take into consideration what will happen tomorrow. So I think APC is just being, uh, Boni specifically, is just being, um, uh, is, is, is being reckless with that statement. Uh, okay. it's, it's for Nigeria to decide. And if, if, if things continue this way, you and I know exactly what should happen to this society. In an ID society, APC should have no business winning the presidential election in 2023 if things continue this way. Well, um, yeah. I remember also in the past, the PDP had made a similar statement um, about ruling the country yeah. for about 60 years. Uh, let, let's also, you know, go further yeah. into the Governor Tom meeting the president. Uh, what's your reaction to that? And of course, mm -hmm. the demands that he is making with regards to um, his security. Well, like I said earlier on, this is not an isolated incident. The whole of Nigeria is under siege. Okay, so if Autumn is using this opportunity to renew calls for improved security, yes, of course, we support that. That's what everybody is asking for. Okay, and there's nothing new that Autumn has said. We've always known that we need to tighten security. We've always known that lives are not safe. Okay, but we need to know exactly what Autumn as the chief security officer of the state, what has it done so far? It's not enough to cry to Abuja. What are you doing yourself in your state, in your domain? Okay, so the visit to Bari is okay, but as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing new. Okay, in, instead of all these sand bites, we want to see action, action on this part, action on the part of the president. People want to see decisions being taken as to how lives will be safeguarded. It's not about election. The average Nigerian is not interested in 2023 election. This is 2021. The average Nigerian is more concerned about his safety and safety day to day. 
Election is not, it's, it's, it's not our focus right now. We want to be safe. Inflation at 17% is unacceptable. Unemployment at 30% is unacceptable. Those are the issues that Nigerians want to tackle. But we're not interested in, in the election. Let's leave that for now. When oh. we go to that bridge, we'll cross it. Yeah, okay? Mr. And Kimbala. not happen to, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah I, I, right. still on the same uh, discussion. If you remember, there's a group called the uh, Fulani Nationalist uh, Nationality Movement that had claimed responsibility for the attack yeah. on Governor Tom. Um, we still haven't yeah. heard that any of those people or their members have been arrested or are being questioned. Um, does yeah. Governor Tom's meeting with the president also, you know, say that he might be seeking the president to take, you know, bigger steps? Uh, with regards, you know, groups like that in the country? As far as I understand Nigeria, nothing's going to happen. Full and nationality movement is an, um, it's a faceless organization, okay? We know Miyeti Allah, we know those who are behind them, but these guys came up from nowhere and said they are behind the attack on Autumn. Whether it's true or not, we do not know. But what I'm saying is that Autumn's visit to Abuja Will not change anything. He might, well, he might as well have issued a statement from his, his independent state asking for government to step up security. So this is not the time for anybody to 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 engage in showmanship. Honestly, that's what I see Autumn doing there: showmanship, um, crying to Abuja. You don't, so what it means is that who is going to cry to Abuja on behalf of Nigerians, thousands, millions of Nigerians who are being attacked? Who is going to cry to Abuja for them? So for me, it, 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 it's neither here nor there, really. Yes, of course, we all know what needs to be done. We all know that things are not going well, security in Nigeria. But hey, let us adopt a more sensible and a more responsible, a, 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 a collective approach towards it. Okay. okay, so this other story is on the Punch newspaper. And it's about the federal government beginning a process to concession 12 highways in the country. And uh, these highways include the uh, you know, Enugu yeah. Potakot Highway, Ilori Jeba, Lagos, Ota, Abekuta, Lagos, Badagri, Semiboda. About 12 highways now that are concessioned to uh, private uh, you know, private firms, basically. And uh, according to the government, this would cost an estimated 1.34 trillion naira, you know, from private sector investment. So is this the way to go, Mr. Akimbola? Absolutely. This is the way to go. If, if we truthfully and sincerely follow due diligence, due, I mean, procedures, that guide PPP. This is the way to go. We've always said it. Let us ask President Abbasanjo why did they dismantle the toll gates? Ever since those toll gates were dismantled, the condition of the roads became worse. Okay? Concessioning roads is done all over the world with the best of intention. Okay? You get people to manage the roads and they deliver to government. All Nigerians want is for us to drive on good roads. Okay, roads that are safe to drive 24 hours of the day. So concessioning is good, but let us also look at the story somewhere I saw that government has lost a lot of money due to poor um, concessioning agreements. A case in point here is the Moin Salam International Airport 2. We all remember what happened with Wal Babalaki. Okay, the, 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 um, the confusion, the court suit, and everything. So let us welcome this development, but we pray that government will do it with the best of intention and that those who are competent and qualified will be allowed to win the bids. It shouldn't be a job for the boys because this is serious business, okay? So that it doesn't um, end up being the way we, 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 we unbundled NEPA and we sold the various components to people who, who lack capacity, financial muscle to do the job. So I welcome concession in principle, but I will seriously appeal to government to follow um, all the necessary procedures and to ensure that merit is the guiding principle here. Yeah, merit is very important. We need to give this source to the best people who have the capacity to manage them in a way that we, don't, we won't have any cause to regret this at all. So I welcome concession if it is done very well. All right. On the nation, the big story there on the nation says the ex-military uh, chief is saying troops lack proper arms to fight. 
uh, it's 2021. We're, um, you know, more than, you know, 10 years since the uh, Boko Haram started. We've eventually now, of course, uh, yeah. started to hear about bandits and kidnappers and headers and, and you know, whatnot. Um, do you think that we still should be hearing of things like that um, with the amount of funding that should have gone into our security setup in the last decade? Um, yes, and, yes and no. Yes, because it takes time, really. To, adu to adequately equip your um, armed forces, it takes time. It costs a lot of money. No, because I'm aware, you are aware that a lot of money has been spent or has been reportedly voted for um, procurement of um, arms and ammunition for Nigerian armed forces. And of course, we are very much aware of what happens under Jonathan and what has been reported under even this administration. Okay. Um, two weeks ago, um, the Minister of Defense was talking about, look, we spent so much money, we have not seen results. So if s military chief is coming out to tell us, oh, the military, like, we know they lack proper arms because corruption has crept into the procurement process. It's unfortunate, but that is the truth. Like I said there two weeks ago, in a decent society, the immediate um, serving military chief should have been proved. Okay, if you, if you are there for four years or thereabouts, uh, security has worsened, then you need to tell us what you have done. Or what did you do? We rewarded them with our particular positions. This is Nigeria. So as long as we shy away um, from co calling people to question when we trust so much trust in them, we'll continue to have uh, tales of wars like this. Just so unfortunate. The, okay. the uh, Tribune also says Boko Haram fighting with arms and ammunition uh, seized from Nigerian troops, uh, which of course also doesn't paint yeah. a very good picture of what we're dealing with uh, uh, at this time. At all, at all. Some probably were even sold. Okay, we, we, we've heard of soldiers, policemen um, being accused of supplying ammunition and arms to harm robbers, to bandits. Okay, <laughs> so it is not every time that criminals actually snatch these arms from from our from our, our military people um, actively, some of them connive with these bandits, connive with these criminals uh, by supplying them these ammunition. So it's it's that is the extent to which corruption has, has affected even the procurement of arms and what we manage our security in Nigeria. It's a shame, quite frankly, it's a shame. And as long as we do not hold people accountable. I do not see a hand to this. Not in the near future at all. Hmm. At all. Okay, so... We need to hold people accountable. Yeah. Hmm. So moving away from security matters now to uh, the coronavirus and vaccination. We know what the stance of the Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has been on the coronavirus, uh, you know, a pandemic basically, and uh, his stance as well on vaccination. But on the Daily Independent here, we see a story from the Kogi State Government defending themselves and explaining why they are yet to receive the COVID-19 vaccines. And uh, from the Commission of Information in Kogi State, he's saying here that why they are yet to receive COVID-19 vaccines is because the cold room where these vaccines were supposed to be stored were destroyed last year during the NSAS protest and they were repairing them and that uh, the cold rooms are now fixed and they've written to the Nigerian government to send vaccines to them. I don't know. Do you think this is justifiable seeing what is, you know, the government position has been on this matter before now? It is pure balderdash. It, it is pure nonsense. I mean, permit, permit the use of that word. Um, we've been talking about the receiving vaccines for how many months now? Six months or thereabouts. And the Kogi government, right from day one, never wanted to. And the question you ask is, where is the House of Assembly in all of this? Where are the senators? Where are the um, reps members representing Kogi State? Why are they not calling the government over that? Why are they all um, aligning with him? Okay, the governor, yes, is the executive, is the number one security system, but we have as a assembly who should be able to say, hey, Mr. Governor, the people that we represent, they want this person. You don't want it personally, fine. Your family doesn't want it, fine. But the people of Kogi State, whom we represent, they want this vaccine. That has not happened. And you begin to wonder, 
governors have become so powerful in Nigeria that the House of Assemblies have, have, they have become mere rubber stamps. So that excuse is not tenable. It's not tenable and it's sad that the Kogi governor is using both direct and indirect means to sabotage the fascination exercise and to put the lives of the people of Kogi State at risk. It, it, it's totally unacceptable. Mm. It's unacceptable. All right. So All right. still talking about coronavirus vaccines, we see a, a story here, you know, comparing how Nigeria has fared with Ghana. It's saying Ghana has vaccinated 420,000 people, but Nigeria has vaccinated half of that number, uh, 215,000, that's 277 people. But good news, uh, we heard yesterday that, uh, first of all, South Africa was selling some of its AstraZeneca vaccines because, you know, they were not effective against the local variant, and then MTN purchased some of that and have made donations to Nigeria. So uh, you think we can catch up pretty soon? Oh, yes, sure. And I think the, the vice, pre vice president is also saying somewhere today that we're expecting um, maybe about 8 million um, more vaccines. So I believe that we are on the right path. Okay. And I'm so happy that Lagos, Ogun State, and which other state, they are leading in terms of public response. Maybe because of enlightenment, education, and exposure. Okay. And so, which means, yes, we've started. And I believe that um, the, the the, the positive response from these states will spread to other states. We need to start somewhere, really. And we, we, we don't have to compare ourselves to Ghana. Ghana may have done more as of now, but let's see what happens in another three months. I think that we have enough time and resources to catch up. Okay. All right, so we're going to quickly go to The Guardian. One of the, the stories that says only okay. justice can stop a secession threat. Uh, fire me, Sunny, others tell. Uh, federal government. Uh, do you agree with that um, in the lack of, you know, seeming justice for these persons who have lost lives and property uh, to violence from bandits yeah. and, and the likes? Do you think that, you know, the, the, the secession yeah. threats will continue? Totally, totally. Where there is no justice, there can be, there's no peace. And where there's no peace, there's no development. Okay, inequality will always lead to agitation. People are talking about recession, they're talking about restructuring, they're talking about regionalism because they are not happy with the way the federal government is handling various issues. Okay, nepotistic tendency, uh, the, 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 the over reliance on, this, on the particular section of the country, the type of appointments, and all other things will continue to fuel the cause for recession, okay? So it is not enough to say, oh, we shouldn't restructure. Let us address those issues. Let us go back and look at the recommendations that were made by the National Conference on Presidential Time. That document needs to be revisited. We are postponing a decision that's Critical to the future of this country. Okay? The structure will not happen overnight. If we need a government that will listen to the people, you cannot continue to shout people down. You cannot continue to call them or label them or stigmatize them because they are because they're agitated. If there was justice, if there was equality, if 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 asking for so as long as there's injustice, as long as people don't feel safe or feel appreciated in Nigeria, you will continue to ask for ask for restructuring. Absolutely. All right, and of course, it would continue to give rise to uh, small heroes in different parts of the country. Uh, Sunday Boy is the latest one that we're talking about now. Uh, you know, is it likely that you know another region might also, you know, have its his own I, or uh, their own? Sorry, story? I didn't hear you. I said, you know, I it, it's yeah. likely that it will continue to give rise to these small um, or local heroes springing up in different parts of the country. Sunday Igbo is currently uh, the one that is making headlines uh, from the southwest. Uh, Asari Dokubo also uh, was uh, in the news a few days ago speaking about his own Biafra agitation. And, you know, is it likely that we'll continue to see these, you know, local heroes spring up here and there uh, across the country? 
Oh, I, I didn't get most of what you said, but if I if I just try, I had Sunday go, I had uh, uh, Asai go. Yeah, nature abhors vacuum. Okay, nature abhors vacuum. Local heroes will continue to spring up to advance the cause of their people as long as government does not do what it's supposed to do. You can't blame Sunday Bo. He saw an opportunity, okay, he maximized it, and he's now been touted as the symbol of, 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 of Yoruba regionalism. Mm -hmm. Whether that is true or not, it's debatable. But what I'm saying is that if we do not agree to do what we need to do, the individuals will take it upon themselves to fight. <coughs> Excuse me. They will take it upon themselves to do what they think government has failed to do. So you can't blame Masai Dokubo. Okay, he has made that statement over a week ago. He's not been arrested. Nothing has happened. Sunday Bo is working free because you know that they are saying the truth. Okay, you may not agree with how they are going about it, but hey, Sunday Bo today has made a statement in Nigeria. Sunday Bo today has made a point. He, he, he has created an awareness which nobody can dispute. And all we need to do is to build on what he is doing. Okay. People like Unam Dekamo, people like Asai Dukubo, there are so many of them out there who are silently and quietly agitated. And as long as you do not address these concerns, there will be more Sunday goals. There will be more Asai Dukubos. And you want to ask, is that the way to run a country? Okay. If you continue to neglect minority opinion simply because you are in government, then of course, um, I mean, like, like someone said, as long as you do not allow people to make peaceful changes, then you are indirectly asking uh, uh, for violent changes. And in what dimension that will happen, nobody can predict. We do not pray for war, we do not pray for anything terrible. But the, the, the important thing is that these concerns, these, these agitations are becoming too loud to be ignored. They're becoming too, 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 too intense that we cannot continue to um, sidestep them. All right. I, I also want us to go, you know, a, a little back. We um, spoke about Governor Tom and meeting the president, but um, how damaging is this to... <coughs> uh, early on the program, we started by talking about things that seem to be normal uh, for us here in Nigeria. And you, you also mentioned that you don't expect that the Fulani nationalist movement, which apparently is faceless as it stands, uh, to, you don't expect that there would be questioned or there would be arrests made. But how damaging is it to our country and to what we stand for as a nation that a governor can almost be assassinated and we have accepted that as normal and we've moved on? And we don't have a, a country that um, has immediately taken steps to ensure that it never repeats itself or has immediately taken steps to arrest those who were responsible. So we, we're left to imagine now what you know, we'll be talking about if they were successful, if Governor Tom um, lost his life in that attack, what would be the narrative today? And how damaging is it for us that we have accepted, seemingly accepted that as, okay, one of the things in the news and we've moved on? Do you know that there are some people in Nigeria today who are saying to themselves, it serves them right? Do you know some people are saying that? That if it has happened to other people, if it's happening to, to autumn, then maybe government will not take it seriously. We do not pray for any of our leaders to die or to be attacked. But we are human beings with blood running in our veins. Okay? So maybe people are saying maybe when the leaders begin to get directly affected by the security in Nigeria, maybe they will do something about it. Okay? Autumn escaped narrowly and is, is, is gone to Abuja. How many times has he gone to Abuja to plead the, 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 the cause of the people of Benue State? How many times has he made this kind of noise that he's making? Okay? So, it's damaging. I agree. It has gotten to a state where even the governor of a state is not safe. But remember that it was the chief of army staff himself ran into an ambush and he escaped narrowly. So, it's really, really bad. And that is sending a very dangerous signal, not only to Nigerians, but Nigerians who are in diaspora. Okay? And that is going to affect the foreign remittances that are coming in from Nigeria. People would rather stay where they are safe rather than come to where they are not safe. So it sends a very damaging message.
to everybody out there. Okay? But like I said, there are people who are silently saying, thank God, they are finally feeling the heat too. And let's see how they will react. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, before we wrap up, I think we need to talk about the story right now because the Nigerian Bar Association are currently protesting something that happened in Abuja. Uh, the story here on the punch reads, NBA protests as magistrate orders lawyer handcuffed and jailed, get jails counsel for contempt of court. So the story here, according to the punch, was that uh, uh, the Abuja magistrate courts, the magistrate Ibrahim Mohammed, ordered the policemen to arrest and handcuff a lawyer. His name is Eburu Bats for challenging him on the summary of a case before the court. So while he was, you know, you know, delivering his judgment on the matter, this lawyer interjected. And so the magistrate sentenced him to two months immediately without trial. So the NBA now is protesting and saying this is an arbitrary abuse of power and that there was no trial simply because he interjected in court. He just sentenced him and he was handcuffed and arrested. Oof. Where do you stand on this issue, Mr. Akimola? <laughs> We we are not too far away from uh, from the jump when you hear things like this. First of all, the court has its rules. There are orders of proceedings, okay, which the lawyer should have been very much aware of. Okay, so on one hand, the lawyer might have heard in breaching certain sections of the court order. On the other hand, should the judge have gone to that extent? Should the magistrate have gone to the extent of ordering a him to be handcuffed and to be jailed without a trial, okay? So I I think he should have played by the rules, okay? If the lawyer had done something wrong, then what does the law say? What do the rules say, okay? So, and whatever happened to tempering justice with mercy? You are dealing with your judgment, the man was interjecting and was interrupting you, then of course you apply the rules. Okay, I, I, I know that this issue will be resolved. Now that the NBA has intervened, I'm sure they won't be released. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, 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 it will guide us going forward in how lawyers conduct themselves. I, I, I remember in the days of Chief Gary, I mean, he was very fond of, of, of um, taking on judges and all that, but I, I never recall an incident where he was tried and he was handcuffed and he was jailed. Okay, so in this case, I, I, I think the judge went a bit too far. Mm -hmm. No matter right. what the lawyer did, I think he went a bit too far. So, so it was a case of. But I, I am. I'm, mm. Yeah. So, so I'm saying you're saying it's, it's a case correct. of it's a case of two wrongs don't make a right. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. Uh, I mean, um, the lawyer may be out of the out of exuberance or probably got carried away and couldn't just um, contain his emotion and the judge. We're supposed to be older, wiser, should, should have um, struck a balance between the two to avoid this um, crisis that is brewing. So I, I, I very much believe that the guy will be this person. Maybe he woke up on the wrong side of the bed that day. Uh, good morning, once again. The morning oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Thanks once so again much. for your Thanks views so this morning. Thank and uh, you. looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Have a lovely day. You Bye. too. You too. Thank you. Uh, stay with us uh, this morning. We have a little bit more, or actually a lot more to share with you this morning. But first of all, we're going on a short break. When we mm -hmm. come back, it's uh, time Today for... Today in history. So we're talking football and a mass shooting in the U.S. Stick around. <laughs>